What's up everybody? I want to share with you a couple of really good effective tips for you guys when you feel a little something coming like a cold or a little strange feeling in the upper palate of your throat, in your throat. These are just good tips not only for this pandemic but it's also a good tip and practice for any type of virus. Number one, rubbing alcohol any degree. This is 70% alcohol. What you do, you take the lid off, take your finger as such, never put your fingers in your face, use the back end, hold your nostrils and take five deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth as such. Then push out through the mouth. Proper breathing is in through the nose, out through the mouth. You repeat this five times with each nostril. Let me demonstrate again. Inhale in. Hold and out through the mouth. What this does is it pulls in the vapors and the vapors will start breaking down the virus and with the deliberate intake of a lot of oxygen it helps to reinforce the breakdown of the virus the key point that i need you guys to keep in mind is that the minute you feel that tinge or that sensation in your nostril the back of your your throat palate or in your throat the minute you feel something is happening you need to do this after you've taken in the air in both nostrils five sides I need you to sit and then take 10 more deliberate breaths on your own. In through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. I guarantee the next morning you're going to notice the difference. The other thing that I would like to recommend is to never sneeze or cough in the palm of your hands. This is where we cross contaminate. Cough in our hands, we're touching doorknobs, we're touching other objects, we're touching people, we're touching our clothes and they're touching us and touching our clothes. No, you never want to cough or sneeze in your hands. You always want to cough or sneeze either in a handkerchief, but if you don't have a handkerchief, you have this. The inner area of your arms, like as such. Cough here, sneeze here, no matter what. Keep it here not in your hands or on your hands or out in the general public. Those are good tips for you to live by from here on out. Now let's get into it. What's up everybody? It is such a beautiful day. I'm at a nearby park. It's very quiet. It's not only very quiet, it's just very peaceful. You can feel something amazing is in the air. Haven't you guys noticed since the quarantine, if you have gone out and gone to a nearby park or just taken in the air in general, that Everything just seems so much more peaceful and cleaner and beautiful. The sun is shining brighter than ever. That's the only reason why I have on these shades. Y'all know I'm not afraid to show my eyes. But it's very, very beautiful out here. It's not many people, but it's all good. I love it. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, you guys should be picking this up. All there. I wanted to come out here and talk a little bit about what I warned you guys about about five years ago or so and that is the trickery that has been going on in the so-called conscious movement now what I'm about to share with you is not unique to the so-called conscious movement it is true with any movement, any 
collective school of thought that is not being or cannot necessarily be completely controlled um, in a very simplistic way. In other words, the movement and the intent behind it is much, much bigger than what it really is or what it is about. So here is why no matter what school of thought, what religion, what belief system, uh, what theology, whatever it is, no matter what it is, on this realm it's all about controlling the narrative in order to shape people's perception of reality and what is possible and most of all to control the mind. Now I warned you guys years ago that there were people being positioned to be the face of the so-called New Age movement, the conscious community, the pro-black movement, this group, that group, any group that has taken hold, or just about any group that has taken hold of having collected the attention and minds of a lot of people is very very likely to fall under what I'm about to share with you. They always present someone the face of as or a couple as the face of and without fail these people are usually grade-a narcissists, they are egomaniacs, they will do anything for power, for clout, for dominance, uh, and you know if the, with the right offer they they'll wing it because it's all about them feeding their ego and materialism and clout and feeling as if they are bigger and better than everyone else basically people who are willing to do anything to feel powerful and to have a seat at the elite table when that is still just a form of being a slave. Not as much of a slave with as many restrictions as the average group of people, but still a slave. So the formula is really simple. You get those who learn and copy and book study the genuine or learn from their handlers and position them in the in in the forefront and without fail these people will always eventually show their flaws they're going to always create drama some of them are being directed to create drama and distractions and so on and so forth now that's going to appeal to most people because this is not requiring any real deep thinking any real inner work that hard stuff no real thinking People want to be entertained. People love a train wreck. People love to see someone being teared down or torn down. And so when you look at all these different groups, oh, let me tell you, people also love to have their ego and their expression and their form uh, promoted above another group. This is the game of duality meaning one extreme to the next. Two polar opposites, constantly going at one another. Both think they're all right. Both think the other is all wrong, when neither is all right or all wrong. But the people in the middle always fall for one or the other. And this keeps us what and what I have coined as extreme states of consciousness. And when we are in extreme states of consciousness, there is no way we are doing proper discernment. There is no way we are truly learning. There is no way we are really growing. If we only stick with people that make us feel comfortable or people that look like us, there is no way we are growing. Or people who think like us. One thing about me, and this is the absolute fact, I have watched and listened to a lot of people. Do you guys really think I agree with everything that everyone who I'm subscribed to or watch say or do? I don't. But I'm mature enough and I'm sensible enough 
to see myself in those people, no matter who they are, what their race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, height, appearance, whatever. I can still see a reflection of myself, a mirror reflection of myself in all of them, and I can take what they have to offer and use it and move on. But I don't mind coming back and being intrigued or entertained or have my consciousness spark by something that challenges where I am. That's how we grow. That's where knowledge comes into play. Have you guys ever wondered how and why so few have dominion over the many? Do you think they selectively decide what they're going to study and learn from? No. They're studying from everything. Everything, everyone, and even things that the slaves say, oh, that's crazy, that's impossible, that, uh-uh. The slaves thinking like that, but they're all the way over interacting and learning and working with inter-extra-dimensional beings, what many people even call aliens. They're on a whole nother level. And to get out from underneath the slave master, the best way of doing so is to learn as much, if not more, than what he or she knows. Then you can become the master of your own destiny. And like I say, if we are not in control of our own mind power, something or someone else will be. As they hoard the real knowledge, as they keep our perspective and perception focused on what they have put into place what they have taught us as what's possible and what's reality so these pro-black conscious communities these uh, spiritual new age and all this stuff all these communities are being exposed but here's what's really happening the face of these organizations are being exposed as it inevitably happens with everyone but what do, what do the people do? They get mad and they want to throw the entire movement everything that's associated with it they want to throw it all out. Same thing happened with religion. Do you see the same thing happening with different races and groups? The worst elements of each race and group is made the face of and the outsiders are looking at each race and group in the image and reflection of the worst element and will put and throw the entire group under the same bus. This is the trap, people. This is the trap. Again, discernment and open mind and keeping things in this proper context is key. But how many of us are really doing that? And the ones that are doing it are very, very, very few. Here is why the saying in the Bible about the path to righteousness or the, the pathway out is always narrow and only a few tend to make it out because it's always usually or typically has been the few, the outcasts, the misfits and so on and so forth who could see through all of this stuff because they are open minded and they put in that work and they rejected the popular narratives or rejected what is so called quote unquote trending. So now it is time for us to shift our perspectives. There are so many videos coming out now about don't follow this person, don't follow that person. And you guys either go from one extreme, you either go and follow them and, and become entrenched and entranced by them and not take caution to the wind or you throw them out altogether. No, you got to find your middle ground. It's all about finding the middle ground family. And that's ultimately what I've been saying for years. We can learn something from everyone. Everybody has a piece of the puzzle. Every school of thought has something that we could learn from. I'm speaking based on what I am and what I have been doing all along. Now, for me, what I've found with a lot of these people is that um, I've always been tapped in to some degree and what will happen is that I'll come across someone or a school of thought that just so happen to match what I've been talking about and learned long before I knew what a new age movement or pro-black or before YouTube was even a thought in the wind. 
this is not new to me. So a lot of people used to be out there saying stuff that like I'm studying, copying from, a, no, I, I have not copied from any, if anything, you will find a lot of people copied from me, but I don't even trip on that because it's, it, the information is still flowing. The problem I have is that when people take the information and they get on camera and they write books and they present it as if they came up with it and never giving credit to where it came from. I always, if I do mention uh, a teaching or a school of thought or something that I did not necessarily originate or come up with or start, I will always give credit to the source from which it came. I don't ego trip like that and I'm not uh, uh, so insecure that I will not give a shout out to someone else who's giving and sharing something that I know will be beneficial to the rest. A lot of these people who have these larger platforms will not share their platform with someone who knows more or as much as they know. Even if it's out of a book, they, they won't because they're too afraid that that person is going to take their audience. I've never been afraid of that. If I, if I was so concerned about that, I would have... Oh, there's a wasp. Yo, you guys... <laughs> Uh, if I were concerned about that, I would have taken that those deals that I've been offered in the past if, if I cared about all of that. No, I care about standing up for what I feel is right, following through on my purpose and my mission, and standing in integrity and honor. That's what I care about, the truth as I so see it fit. And I'm not compromising for anyone to do that. So now we have all these people who are angry and upset because the person they gravitated towards and trust trusted is now being exposed but that still does not mean that their teachings and the things they've shared over the years cannot be used and applied in your life and used up for some kind of value. It does not mean that at all. And if again you want to get upset about someone misleading, deceiving, you get mad at yourself because you made that choice. I know the majority of people who follow these people are following them because of the drama they bring and the 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 um the conflicts. The beefing, the, when they're tearing down someone else and gossiping about someone else. That's what y'all, or y'all paying attention because somebody is making you hot and they come across sexy and they're turning you on. Where are you learning in that? Don't get mad at them. I don't even really fault them. They're going to do what they, they're going to do. But again, we have to take personal accountability as well. That's the greater or greatest part of the equation right here. Self-accountability and personal responsibility. So if you find yourself um, feeling like you have egg on your face because you follow someone who wasn't really what they presented themselves as and they really didn't learn this stuff or they are not living according to what they're teaching, that's your lack of discernment. And you wanting to be more entertained than to be mentally, psychologically, and spiritually and physically challenged. Own it. Just own it. And do better. Now the next thing I want to talk about is kind of in the same category. I often hear people ready to dismiss a theory or information or knowledge from someone because they don't have quote unquote scholarly uh, credentials or they don't have a, a degree or if they didn't study under someone or you know all of these different reasons to dismiss someone's knowledge but I must remind you guys how many of these scholars are going to study the science and information and knowledge from those who didn't even have a high school education Einstein didn't have those credentials that you guys are looking at but his science, even though some of it has been flawed, but a lot of it is still being applied and studied today by so-called scholars. 
Some of the things that I was saying years ago before the scientific community a few years later had since validated. For instance, that the entire universe is in a simulation or aka hologram. Every reality is a hologram to some degree and that everything is mine. Your mind is like a projector. Your thoughts are alive. Everything is conscious. But never, not everything is self-aware. The science community is just starting to catch up on this. But of course it can also work in the reverse. We see that the scientific community finds, or those who have uh, degrees and who are scholarly, are bringing forth things that people who are not tapped in di did not bring in. You see what I'm saying? It goes both ways. Both sides of the coin can bring something of value to humanity and I'm going to keep saying that because y'all seem to keep forgetting this the Dogon tribe is not operating in what we considered a uh, traditional highly scholarly uh, you know um, you know these 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 excuses people give they're not operating these are these were indigenous people simply connected with nature and the cosmos and they had advanced knowledge of the solar system before Europeans was even on the radar there are many indigenous people who had a pulse on a lot of things but if you guys are not studying and learning from them and you're just accepting one narrative you won't know this reason why my family support me so much now is because years ago what sounded crazy ended up being proven to be true or months or I have a reading or a prediction or something and it'll end up coming true so they saw that I was obviously tapped in and ahead of my time so you can tap in and bring forth information and knowledge straight from the source but you can also do it through research and the typical idea of science and research in a 3D physical way of doing so. Again, only a fool would insist that only one type of mentality can give or bring something valuable for you or humanity as a whole. I can give endless examples of those who are plugged in and tapped in who knew things before the general population in the scientific community found out. But again, it also happens in the reverse. Again, keep an open mind. Be open to learning something from everything and everyone. And then we will start seeing the playing field become more equally yoked and balanced. And here, here we will see more souls being free from the matrix and ready to move on to the next level. All right, that's all I have to share. Stay tuned for the next one. And I want to thank everyone, before I go, who have donated. I really, really appreciate it. I sent you guys personal emails. If you have not received an email from me, if you donated, it's because it, I have not gotten it for whatever reason. So by all means, if you have, if you have not gotten a personal email from me, please, please, uh, Reach out to me at astrobubaby at gmail.com because I love to give a personal thank you to everyone because I'm humbly accepting. This is something I had to work on because I'm so used to giving and doing for other people. I had to humble myself and let people show gratitude or, or uh, thanks to me for the work and for what I give. See, I had to learn and grow too. You know, still am. <laughs> All right, continue to question, learn, and grow, and you are loved beyond measure, and happy, happy travels.